Hey everyone, today we're going to be ranking all of the hex perks in the game from worst to best. Hex perks are generally high risk, high reward perks that have strong effects, but the vulnerability of being tied to a totem, which can be broken by a survivor. Let's get into it. Hex Huntress Lullaby is going to start us off. Huntress Lullaby is a hex perk that requires you to build up tokens. Tokens are gained by hooking survivors. At one token, you will shorten the time between the warning sound of a skill check by 14% for survivors. For two, 28%, for 3, 42%, for 4, 56%, and then for 5, the skill check sound will be completely removed. If a skill check is missed, survivors will also get an extra 6% regression penalty, in addition to the base 10. This bug aims to make skill checks particularly hard, and require a lot more focus, as without the sound, they can often be hard to react to in time. This perk is actually a lot better than it sounds. With that said, it's still not that great. And I find it often gets broken before it reaches that fifth stack, where it's at its best. This perk is cool, but Ruin Say activates instantly and does a lot more in a lot less time. The build up time and then the resulting effect is usually not enough to make this perk worthwhile. I find this perk to be fun though, and sometimes worthwhile to bring along on a gimmickier skill check or terror radius based build. The better choice for good and consistent slowdown though, is Ruin. Hex Thrill of the Hunt is next up. This perk starts off with 5 tokens. These tokens represent how many totems remain in the trial, allowing you to keep track of how many are left. When survivors go to cleanse or bless a totem, they will suffer from a 50% penalty to their action speed, with this decreasing by 9% for each totem destroyed. You'll also gain up to a 50% increase to blood point gains in the hunter category. This reduces by 10% each time a totem is cleansed. I would argue this perk is largely a product of its time, and is now quite outdated and outdone by new newer perks like Retribution and Undying. This perk isn't dreadful, but I think there's better options now. This perk is a good pick though if you don't have too many perks, and you want something to help stop your other hexes getting cleansed. With boons now in the game, and this perk giving a fairly considerable slowdown to any blessing or cleansing action, it's not a bad pick. The main issue I have with this perk is that as a hex, it can be broken, and if it's the first to go, it doesn't have any effect really. Retribution gives you information if it's broken, Undying may makes another perk survive, this just goes. So it has a decent effect, sure, but there's better alternatives still. Hex Haunted Ground is a perk that I think is actually a little bit overrated. This perk will spawn in two hex totems upon entering a trial. When one of these totems is cleansed, all survivors will become exposed for 60 seconds. Exposed is a status that will let you insta-down survivors, basically. This sounds pretty great in theory, having a totem trap that baits survivors to cleanse it, but rewards you instead. However, 60 seconds is not very long. Generally, I find this perk will get you maybe one free down, but not much else. On the rare occasion, this perk will let you completely wipe the whole survivor team, but that really is rare. After this 60 second period, the perk is done and gone. Of course, there are times too when it simply won't get broken. Many smart survivor teams will just straight up avoid the hexes if they suspect haunted ground. Equally, many will be capable enough of avoiding you for 60 seconds, either by by hiding or going to a strong looping area. This can work in your favour though, giving you a bit of breathing room and some time to regain control. Hex Retribution is a hex perk that aims to punish survivors who cleanse totems. If a totem is cleansed, survivors suffer from the oblivious status effect for 45 seconds. If a hex totem is cleansed, all survivor auras will be revealed to you for 15 seconds. This perk is pretty good because even if it does get cleansed very early on, it does give you some information still. A bit like Haunted Ground, this perk wants to be cleansed, and acknowledges almost that survivors will be going for the totems. This perk's effects on dull totems is also really nice, as even if the survivors don't cleanse the hex, you still might get some value if someone with inner strength, say, cleanses a totem. A similar issue this perk has though to Thrill of the Hunt is that if it goes first, it's not so great, although will give you a bit of information in its dying breath. In a meta where hexes and totems in general are quite important and prominent, and you can can basically guarantee that they'll be broken each game, this is a pretty
pretty solid pick. Punishing survivors who cleanse dolls and hexes. Hex the third seal is a very simple hex, which applies the blindness status effect to survivors when you injure them. This status effect is then permanent until the totem is cleansed. So, once applied to everyone, the whole survivor team is affected by blindness. This may sound pretty bad, but it's actually quite effective. Blindness blocks a survivor's aura reading. Many survivor perks to do with information focus on aura reading, and this perk blocks them all. It also blocks hooked survivor auras, making it difficult if you weren't paying attention to know where a teammate is hooked. This can sometimes lead to a free second stage on someone, because their team straight up didn't notice because of the blindness. This is also a hex that I find many people leave up for a while, and don't bother searching for, as they don't seem too threatened by it. It's also a hex that they may not notice at all, even when blinded, and they may only notice once it's too late, and their perk has failed to notify them. Again, it's quite disorienting. The issue with this is that it can be countered by one of the most powerful perks, not even in the game, Discord. With communication, this perk kinda crumbles. Largely though, against most survivors, I find it to be quite effective honestly. Hex Plaything is a hex perk that applies the oblivious status effect to survivors who are hooked for the first time. Oblivious will make it so they can't hear your terror radius, allowing you to sneak up on them. They will suffer from oblivious until the respective Plaything totem is cleansed. The survivor cursed by the hex is the only one who can break the hex totem for 90 seconds. The cursed survivor can find the totem when within 16 meters, where its aura will be revealed to them. After the 90 seconds, any survivor can break the totem. This may not sound so great, but Oblivious is quite a disorienting effect. There's also the cool effect of denying other survivors from cleansing the totem, making it quite a bit harder for the Oblivious survivor. Often when on a map with good totem spots, a survivor can go a considerable duration before they find their totem. It depends on the kind of level you're playing at, I suppose. I personally find a bit like Third Seal. It's quite an effective debuff to the survivors though, on the whole, at kind of average play. Removing your terror radius can be quite confusing from the survivor's perspective. Hex Crowd Control will block windows for 20 seconds when a survivor does a rushed vault through them. This effect will occur each time a rushed vault is performed, until the hex totem is broken. This perk acts as a means to easily shut down loops and force survivors to leave areas, or take alternate routes on loops. My personal issue with this perk is that it is kinda easy to counter. A survivor can generally vault a window once, maybe get around the loop another time, then drop a pallet, and the only difference in that chase is that they didn't vault the window twice. It certainly makes chases shorter and can for sure make some survivors panic or become slightly confused by the window blocking, but largely they'll just adapt and end up dropping a pallet slightly earlier or moving on to another area. At least when I'm in the survivor position, that's how it goes. It is a powerful effect though and it can for sure have some real effect. Say on shack, you basically force the survivor to drop the shack pallet or get hit, which is good considering it's one of the best looping areas in the game. Hex Blood Favor is a perk that will block all pallets in a 32 meter radius when you damage a survivor for 15 seconds. This perk is quite strong now, especially on ranged characters such as Huntress or Trickster, who can activate this perk with their ranged powers. This perk is still not so great on killers who mainly damage when close to survivors, as if you hit a survivor they can still relatively easily just run away from the area of blocked pallets. With that said, 32 meters is a pretty considerable area. Often it's not enough of a radius to stop a survivor from moving onto another tile and continuing chase though. Depending on the map this may really do some damage and make your chases a whole lot easier. Again this perk is quite effective now on range killers as they can apply this at a range and then catch up to the survivor's position in time to utilize the blocked area. This perk has had quite a considerable buff recently, increasing from a 16 meter radius to a 32 meter radius. I would say it's pretty worthwhile now and the perk survivors will definitely have to find and break or suffer the difficulty of having many blocked pallets. Hex Devour Hope is a token based hex perk. You gain tokens by hooking a survivor, moving 24 meters away from the hook and then waiting for them to be saved. Once saved, you gain a token. The first token won't do anything, the second will give you a 5% movement speed buff for 10 seconds after hooking a survivor, 3 tokens will make all survivors permanently exposed, 4 tokens give no extra effect, 5 tokens will let you kill or mori down survivors regardless of their hook stage. All these effects will remain as long as the hex totem is up and has not been broken. This is a deadly perk, but also one of the riskiest and arguably hardest to get to its full potential. If it ever reaches 5 stacks though, you can insta down and insta kill people. It's pretty powerful. The main drawback 
aspects are that you have to be 24 meters away from a hook when a save happens, which isn't always possible with quick saves, or if a chase is started nearby to a recently hooked survivor. The second other issue is largely that once survivors become exposed at 3 stacks, they're all gonna scramble and focus on hexes until your devourer is destroyed, unless you mask it with special attacks. So it's that critical point where you have to act and capitalize on it quickly. A bit like Haunted Ground though, even if you don't get to insta down anyone, at the very least it does give it a bit of game delay, as everyone panics about being exposed. Hex No One Escapes Death is an end game perk that will activate upon all generators being completed. When the gens are done, Noed will apply to any available doll totem, and give you the benefit of 4% increased movement speed. It'll also make all survivors exposed, allowing you to one hit down them. This perk is quite strong, and simply for the fact that it gives you as a killer a free reward for not much at all, allowing you to insta down the survivors in the end game. This perk is also very effective because survivors generally are very altruistic, and so this perk is amplified by that, and can create many situations where a game is snowballed and a full team is wiped because one guy got caught by the noed. However, equally, do bones is a good counter argument to this perk. Much of the time though, this perk can go unnoticed if you don't have any other hexes, and so the survivors ignore the totems. And it can, again, often lead to their downfall. Most times, if you bring noed, you'll secure yourself a free kill in the end game, or in lucky cases, a few. Hex Ruin is a perk that helps to slow down generators. When a survivor lets go of a generator whilst Ruin is active, the generator will immediately begin regressing, and at 200% of the normal regression speed. Essentially, a survivor has to commit to a generator and stay on it, or they have to let go and let it fall into ruin as it rapidly regresses. This is widely known as probably the best slowdown perk in the game, due to the considerable damage it can do, with very little effort from the killer. There's no prerequisite, it's a powerful effect, and generally it will get at least some usage before the survivors inevitably try to find it. It achieves generator regression and pressure in one, allowing you to begin a chase, have a gen regress, and at a considerably higher rate. This perk is incredibly powerful, especially when paired with other slowdowns or our final hex perk. Hex Undying, in my opinion, is the best hex perk and potentially the best killer perk in the game. This perk essentially lets you double the duration of any hex perk, which is some of the most powerful perks in the game. When a hex totem is cleansed, Undying breaks instead, allowing your other hexes to live on, and also keep any of the tokens they've acquired. Further, when a survivor is within 4 meters of a dull totem, their aura is revealed to you. This perk allows Ruin to have two breaks before leaving, devour a second chance with multiple stacks, blood favor more time to block pallets, anything the hexes can do, undying can make it last longer. Sure, it takes two perk slots essentially, but again, these are some of the most powerful, if not the most powerful perks in the game. So, two slots are almost always worth it to get the extended duration and extra little bit of information from the aura reading ability. Again, whatever hexes can do, undying allows the same, but twice. This perk is incredibly strong, but of course does basically require you to run another hex in addition to it. Alright, well that's gonna do it. I do hope you enjoyed, and be sure to drop your own thoughts on this down below. Thanks, and goodbye.